Want to know how to get kicked off of a guided fishing trip? Do this. Here I go fishing, boys. Send it style. Right, right, really, boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make you famous, Billy. <laughs> Send it. We are here in Dayton, Tennessee for the Tin Can Crew Meetup. We are doing a boat build. I'm gonna show you a little bit about it here in just a second. All right, so we're here at the PB Lodge. It's like personal best lodge, I guess is what it stands for, unless you like peanut butter and jelly like me, so it sounds like peanut butter and jelly to me, but this place is super cool. I'm gonna walk you guys around and show it to you. But this is a bass fishing tournament, like hotel place. So every single room has its own garage that's big enough to fit a boat and a trailer. And the owners of this place is who we're actually gonna be building a boat for. The rooms are super nice. All the staff has been very, very helpful and they have accommodated us working all week long and staying up late all night long working on these boats. This place has got plenty of parking for you if you need it. And the best part about the PB Lodge, it is literally right next to the river or lake or whatever this is. But the boat ramps right over here, great places to eat nearby. So if you guys ever need a fishing trip, place to come here in Dayton, Tennessee is the PB Lodge. So the PB Lodge owners were nice enough to give us a, a bunch of rooms we can stay in and we've been grinding on this boat all week. So let me show you how that went and then we'll take a close look at the finished product.
Mike, what's going on? Tell us about the turf that we got on this boat. All right, so this is a hybrid split. This is hydro turf. This is the charcoal gray with a black lining, uh, with the teak, teak matte turf. And then this is straight flat teak turf from Orthodox. And it's charcoal matte also, but it's a lighter gray. And we ended up splicing them together and routing them. And then you very, very craftily, you know, smooth out the edges from the router. And that is our end deal. And since it was so nice, we did it all the way back there. We labeled the, this is Hootie's boat. So we did the Hootie's boat route. And we also did a bump board route. I don't think they use bump boards down here, but if they ever do, <laughs> they ever do a catch water release tournament, undisputable. And then we also ride at the very back of the turf. <laughs> That's a little bit of the thing we did. And everything else is pre routed turf that Nate installed. John, tell me about the framing on this boat. So the aluminum framing on this boat is all 16 wall tube. And the main frame itself was uh, welded, pre-welded before we got down here at uh, Nate's custom boat shop. And then uh, we dropped it in here and we riveted everything into the hull. So all of the vertical supports, all the walls, and the physical frame itself is welded or riveted to the hull. Eric, tell me about the front plate we got up here. Yeah, yeah, so we had a trolling motor mount, which is an awesome feature if you're just trying to get your trolling motor mounted level in the front. And we started looking at it and realized, that, you know what, let's just take a few more minutes here and let's dress this whole front. And so um, we, we cut a big uh, piece of, of uh, .090 uh, aluminum and we laid it across and we, we cut some fun lines in here to give it some character, right, to make the boat original, a little custom, a little unique. And what's cool about that is it gives us a chance to light underneath here. And also, it really dresses up this edge. So this this boat underneath all the, you know, the, the the beautiful finish is pretty beat up. It's got a lot of bent rails, and so that gives us a chance to kind of dress this front and just make it look a lot cleaner, coming in, you know, coming into the dock where all the ladies are going to see it and everything else. Nice. <laughs> Jeremy, tell me about the electrical. <laughs> so uh, we did this all in 14 gauge uh, marine grade wiring. All the wiring's hidden. Uh, when you look into this thing, we wired it up. We've got lights under the hatches. Everything is nice and cleanly done. Everything is all ribbed underneath. So when you look down in that box, you don't see anything. Here we got our fuse panel. Runs off a power source. We flip it off here. On. Here is your live well timer. Power on. You can run it as, as a constant or you can flip it to the time. And then here's your adjustment in increments. Back to the off. And then here's our illuminated switch panel. Obviously we're running, we're running our boat lights. We're running our custom interior lights that are in behind the back lights, all our rod locker lights. And then we actually added some back stuff uh, running into the back and our nav lights. So everything cleaned up real nice. When you open all these hatches and start looking around, you can't find a wire. Nice. Nice and cleanly done. All right, inside the cockpit, we have the cockpit walls. These are aluminum, uh, a piece of aluminum sheeting that we had CNC'd out the tin can crew. Behind all this, we have a piece of acrylic that we sanded down with 80 grit sandpaper and uh, cleaned off real well with uh, alcohol. And then behind it, we have an LED light strip. So when you turn everything on, it'll glow the letters of tin can crew through the panel and gives it a really cool accent piece and lights up the cockpit enough just to see everything. Very nice. So here we have two cup holders. Very good guy with two first names. Guy with first names. Let's give it a hand for the guy with two first names. <laughs> These are the hatches we make in the shop. They got a drain tube and a recessed drain in every one of them. They're all on the website. They're available powder coated, white, black. If you got something custom, just ask. And they all just drop in? They're all just dropped in, just rivet them in. You'll see it in the videos, how we put her together. If you guys want something crazy cut, we'll cut it for you. All right, so you have a 18 gallon uh, all welded and stamped live well with the Flowrite premium kit. Down here is the, the drain pole. Then we have the intake right here. We call it the red capped piece. <laughs> the overflow, inch and eighth. This is all three quarter inch tubing. And then basically ident identical setup without the plumbing over there for a cooler. And then we have the VT2 system in the lid, which helps get the carbon dioxide carbon yeah out out of the tank and brings fresh oxygen into the tank 
Back here, you have the 800 gallon per hour pump connected to a three-way valve that's connected to this cable and the actual switch is right up right there on that panel. That lets you direct the traffic of the water going in or out of the live well itself. 27 uh, deep cycle interstate battery. We also have a 1,000 gall gallon per hour TH Marine bilge pump back here. Yep. And we use the rest of that flow right plumbing kit hosing to uh, bring the drain for the cooler all the way to the the, the drain plug. So we got our newest tin can crew member here helping out Fuman. Yep. Tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Evan. I work with Eric over at Fuman Boats. Um, but today we're here to talk about the, uh, the last and most important part of a boat build. It's the drain plug. It's the drain plug. Now tell us me. about tell come us on. about the drain plug. Now these things these things really have come in huge in the boating industry lately. I mean, you know, the best the best argument there has been right in the boating industry is is it on the inside or the outside? And today, you know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna squash that. Um, we're putting it on the outside. All right. Last now, how, how do we install one of these so, on the outside of a boat? So you can ask your dad if you need to, but otherwise you just you just you know you grab it right here. If it's a little loose, you might need a bigger one, but you know, not everyone can, not, ev not, every, not everyone can help that. Not everyone can do something about that. So, you know, you flip it up, right? And you, you got some tension. Oh, oh, that, that, that's slack. Now this, yeah, that didn't, this, that didn't is, this drain well. plug isn't for this boat, so you don't want this one. Now we go back to the inside here. We're, go, we're going inside? Hold on. Oh, wow. Wow. Even bigger? That's... Like throwing a hot dog, <laughs> down, a dog down a hallway right there. That's not going to do anything for you. Let's take one from Nate's boat. Yeah, let's steal one from Nate's boat. He takes out all his plugs too. No one's got a plug. This boat's sinking. That's it. That's that's the end of the video right there. <laughs> Ascendant John Boat's video would never be complete without some time in the haters corner, so I've got my haterade, let's go. If you're not familiar with the haters corner, what we like to do at the end of every video is stand in a corner and see who was the most butt hurt in the comments over the last couple of weeks. And because we know that people are sensitive on the interwebs, we don't use their real names. We just call them Scooter. So our first Scooter commented over on my last video that I posted about lies and myths about float pods. He says... You bearded fruit bat, take that LS Who 10 and that wannabe Leonidas look and go practice falling down. Woohoo, boys, we got a feisty one today. But I have 
so many questions about this comment. First off, what does a fruit bat and Leonidas have that, that looks anything alike? Because you can't call me a fruit bat and then tell me I look like Leonidas, which I don't really get at all. I, those, there's no connection. I have, quite, I have so many questions. Well, let's address Scooter's comment. Y'all are really going to have to pick up your game if you're going to make fun of me because that one was about as disappointing as an unsalted pretzel. And if I wanted to hear what an asshole sounds like, I'd fart. But since Scooter can't keep his suck hole closed, I highly advise that he go practice deep-throating a cactus. You are the reason that we have a lifeguard in the gene pool there, Scooter. Our next scooter posted over on my float pod video where we put the float pods on the 10-foot boat. He said, why don't you just get a bigger boat which is more buoyant? I've had so many of these freaking comments. Like, I can't seem to explain to people enough how boring my channel would be is if I said, okay, we got this 10-foot boat. We're going to do something really stupid with it. Uh, we're we're going to get a bigger boat. Nobody wants to see that. It's boring. We're doing stupid stuff on a 10-foot boat because it's awesome and if it works it's gonna be epic and what kind of lame story would it be is if i go out on a brand new 22 foot ranger like nobody wants to hear that story people want to hear an awesome story about a guy dressed as a unicorn wearing a spartan helmet driving 100 miles an hour across the lake and a 10 foot john boat with a giant motor on it that is a much more epic story and if i'm gonna go out that's that's the way i want it to be on a little bitty 10 foot boat doing stupid stuff so our next scooter isn't just one scooter. It was a comment that a scooter made, and then he had an argument with another scooter in the comments section. It was great. Let me tell you about it. So on my last float pod video, scooter posted, I would weld them on, plug the hole in the bottom, extend them to keep the top level with the transom, connect an aluminum tube inside the boat, and use both of the pods as a gas tank. So I commented back and was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. You can make one a gas tank and one a beer keg. That would be super awesome. So another scooter jumps in and he's like, um, I'm pretty sure filling them with fuel and beer would negate any buoyancy. So then another scooter jumps in and he's like, oh, no, 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 it'll float. It's just got to be enclosed. You use a gallon plastic bag. And then the other scooter comes back and he's like, oh, you got to mention specific gravity and gasoline is less than water and HDPE and slightly higher than water and denser plastic like PVC, all this stuff that was going on and all this garbage. It was just a bunch of math and like equations and stuff. So what I've done is I have banned both of them from the channel because not because of the argument, they can argue all they want to. We just don't do math here, especially math math when it comes to safety because safety's always third coffee's first safety third and no math at all so those scooters are gone we don't have to deal with them anymore so last up is our honorable mention of the week this this scooter posted float pods do help with overcoming the cochrane gravimetric distortion effect however you cannot stabilize your warp field without a flux capacitor which i'm pretty sure you can find on amazon <laughs> <laughs> oh god i love it you guys just absolutely crack me up in the comments so the tin can crew meetup was a lot of fun we had a great time it was very 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 exhausting building a boat in five days like that but it turned out really really cool i'm really impressed with the way that everybody was able to work together and get this boat done in five days it was a lot of work but we all had a very good time now this will not be the last time we do this this is going to be a I'll just say more frequent thing we're all going to try to you know meet up and do this more often because it was a great time for all of us to collab together and, and work together and we had a lot of fun plus we get to build some really cool boats that you would normally never see on my channel because I, I don't do bass boats but I did one for this video it was, it was actually really cool if you're one of my regular subscribers and you want to know more about what is going on with the channel and get more involved i am going to start posting more over on the tin can crew channel if you're not subscribed over there it's tin can crew you can find us over on youtube also all of the other tin can crew members that are on youtube post over there frequently as well and you definitely don't want to miss any of those videos either everybody that was involved in this build i have links to their youtube instagram and facebook accounts down in the description box below if you want to check them out. Also, don't forget about our promo code over on tinyboatnation.net if you want to use that. It is full send unicorn. You get 5% off all of your purchases over at tbnation.net. Now, we're going to roll those bloopers here for you in just a second, but first, let us take a moment and always remember, money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a boat. <laughs> Bye, guys. Everyone point to the guy that messed up the wiring. <laughs> All right, so we got our newest tin can crew member right here. This is, wow. Oh, Evan Bankfish. <laughs>
No, you don't need my last name. Let's retry that. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, where the hell have you been? James, tell me about all the Sparky Spark stuff on let's this boat. The, let's use the right name. It's Jeremy Jack. Jeremy yeah. Spark. <laughs> I was about to say that. I was waiting on that. I need to get some actual video. <laughs> all right, let's do it. <laughs> I messed up the wiring, Nate. You. I didn't. I didn't even know how to do wiring. <laughs> It's always the crazy kid. Yeah, everyone goes on. Put the flares on top of the other stuff. <laughs> Everybody point to the guy that messed up the seat base. We're not starting this. <laughs> 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 Adam, now you suck up the crumbs that are underneath of there. Like the black thing. We can stick these lights on here. Hey, Nate. Hey, honey. So if you're one of our regular subscribers and you're not already subscribed, subscribe, sub, sub, what was in that drink?